Number 44, letter A. During an ice skating performance, an initially motionless 80 kilogram clown throws a fake barbell away. Uh, the clown's ice skates allow her to recoil frictionlessly. If the clown recoils with a velocity of uh, 0.5 meters per second and the barbell is thrown with a velocity of 10 meters per second, what is the mass of the barbell? All right, so here's a little picture. The clown is in black, the barbell is in red. All right, initially both the uh, clown here and the barbell have zero velocity. And then the clown is looking to throw the barbell. And as a result of uh, sh uh, she throwing the barbell, uh, as a result of her throwing the barbell, no, not she, as a result of her throwing the barbell, um, the velocity then of that barbell is 10 meters per second. And it's going to be positive since I chose to frame it to the right. And her recoil velocity will then be negative, right? I'm pointing to the left of 0.5 meters per second. And now what we need to do is we need to then figure out the mass of the uh, barbell here. So we had to think about what's the nature of this question. It sounds like a reverse inelastic collision to me, right? Which is basically where right an in, in inelastic collision would be two objects coming together and sticking together. This here is two objects sticking together initially and then coming apart finally. So it's just basically an inverse uh, inelastic collision problem. That being said, I know I'm going to be thinking about conservation of momentum, right? So for letter A here, I know that the uh, momentum before the I'll call it the collision, but it's really the opposite, you know, it's really the, the throwing of the object that acts as the quote unquote collision here. So it's the momentum before is equal to then the momentum after. The momentum before, uh, remember, before these two items are uh, pushed apart from one another, essentially, they act as one unit. And therefore, the momentum before would be the total mass multiplied by that initial velocity. Okay. And now the momentum after, remember, the two objects will now be separated. So then I have the. Um, Momentum of the, uh, what is it? Uh, the momentum of the clown uh, after the uh, collision or AKA after the pushing off plus then the momentum of the barbell after. So now what I'll, I'll do is I'll expand these two terms. Don't know why I just expanded that one and not the other two, but what are you gonna do? So MT times VI will now be equal to M1 V1A plus M2 V2A, okay? And what are, we, what are we after here? We are after the mass of the barbell. The mass of the barbell is M2. Where is M2 in this equation? Here it is. So I want to solve my equation for this. So let's subtract this term on over to the left-hand side. Let's do that first. Okay. So now here I'll have MT uh, times the initial velocity of the system uh, minus then M1 V1A. All right. That will equal then M2 V2A. And now to solve for M2, right, we just got to divide V2A on over, right? V2A. And actually, just to save a little room, this will go bye-bye. And this will be my final equation here, right? So let's start plugging in some values. So what is the initial velocity, though, of the system before uh, the items are released from one another? Well, they're both zero, right? And they should be. They're one and the same. So what happens to this whole term? It goes bye-bye, right? So now basically it's going to be negative m1, which is the mass of the clown, so negative 80, times then the uh, velocity after, which was a negative 0.5. Okay, all divided by then v2a, which uh, was found to be, not found to be, but they gave it to us, 10 meters per second, and it's positive. And that will equal m2. So let's just throw it on into the calculator. m2 will equal, take uh, negative 80 times negative 0.5, Divide that by 10. I mean, we don't even need a calculator for this, but so we got 4.00 meter, uh, not meters, kilograms. So used to answering questions in terms of meters per second, right? But it is now four kilograms. So that is the mass of this barbell. Okay, moving on to B. How much kinetic energy is gained by this maneuver? So uh, in terms of thinking about kinetic energy gained, we have come developed this formula before. So the kinetic energy gained will equal the kinetic energy final minus the kinetic energy initial. All right, so the kinetic energy gain, I'll just write it sub G, will equal the final kinetic energy. Now remember, after this, you know, quote unquote collision or the pushing off happens, we got two separate objects. We got the clown and then the ball. So basically the final kinetic energy would be the summation of the kinetic energy of the clown, which was, I denoted as one, plus the kinetic energy of the, uh, I just forgot what she's throwing, a barbell, uh, that's number two, right? In brackets then, minus the kinetic energy initially, 
Okay, expanding on those terms, we get kinetic energy gain will be equal to one half times the mass of the clown multiplied by the velocity uh, after, because I'm talking about final, uh, squared plus then one half times the mass of the barbell times the velocity of that barbell after squared minus then the initial kinetic energy. Remember, it's a function of velocity, as I'm pointing out in both of those terms. The initial velocity is though is zero. So what's uh, what do we know about this kinetic energy? It goes bye bye. That's so I'm not even going to write it. So therefore, kinetic energy gain will be equal to. Now all we got to do is plug in some numbers here, right? Let me give myself a little more room. So kinetic energy gain will be equal to one half. I'm going to factor out that half term. All right, so I'm just pulling out a common half between them, putting it in the beginning. So m1 is going to be 80. All right, multiplied by then the uh, Velocity after the collision, so it's negative 0.5. And I'm not going to put all the zeros for now. Negative 0.5 squared plus then one half times the mass that we just found before for the ball was four. Multiplied then by that uh, velocity after the throwing off has occurred, so that's 10 squared. And now here we go, right? So basically, this was our equation that we were using. So now just throw it on into the calculator. All right, so we got, let's do them in parentheses first. So we got 80 times negative 0.5, with, remember negative times negative is positive, so 0.5 squared, uh, plus then 0.5 times four times, what did I do? That's so silly, 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 silly. That's what happens when you move too quickly. What did I do here, guys? I added the half again back in. I just told you I factored it out before, and now it's over here. So that we got to erase, all right? Just seeing if you guys are paying attention, that's all. All right, so now back to business. So we get 80 times 0.5 squared. I know it's negative, but remember the two negatives cancel. Uh, plus four times 10 squared. And we get 420, multiply that by 0.5, and we get 210. All right, so 210 joules. All right, so that's how much kinetic energy uh, will be gained by the maneuver. And the question now for letter C is, where does it come from? Where does this kinetic energy come from? Can't be created or destroyed. It's just simply transferred. Well, um, the kinetic energy actually is coming from the clown's muscles, right? The clown is pushing uh, the ball this way. And the balls also, according to Newton's third law, equal but opposite force, pushing then the clown to the left. All right. So, uh, and that energy is coming from uh, her muscles. Okay. So letter C would be muscles. You know, and then you can keep going back on this trail, you know, on this thought train. Well, where does the energy from for her muscles come from? Well, she has to consume energy, right? Somehow she has to intake energy, so it comes from food, right? So food energy. And then you might say, well, where does food energy come from? Right, and it comes from the sun. All food energy will come from the sun. You might say, well, what happens if I eat an animal? An animal doesn't come from, well, yeah, but what does an animal graze on? Not all of them, but most of them. It all comes back to plants somehow, all right? and at least for energy purposes here. So uh, all that energy food source comes from the sun. It's quite amazing if you ask me, um, but that's what it is. So depends on what level uh, you wanna answer this question at. I'm just gonna leave it in terms of her muscles, but you can keep going back to food energy and then to the sun, and then I'm sure you can go back further than that too, okay? All of a sudden you get back to the energy of the Big Bang. Guys, thank you so very much. Please remember to subscribe. I look forward to helping you with the next question. Take care now.